name is Monica Adrian from the Merced County Office of Education's Early Care and Education Department. With the assistance of the Great Valley Center, we've created this DVD for parents and children to build awareness about childhood sexual abuse. We know this is a difficult and sensitive subject to talk about, but we want parents and children to learn all they can about childhood sexual abuse so they are able to talk about it openly with one another. Open and trusting communication between parents and children is an extremely effective weapon against potential sexual abuse. This DVD contains two parts. Part one is intended for parents and other adults to watch without children present. This part gives many important facts about childhood sexual abuse as well as the many myths surrounding the subject. In part two, we will show examples of parents and other adults having conversations with children about this subject. Part two may be appropriate for you to watch with older children, but we recommend previewing this portion without children before making that decision. Childhood sexual abuse can be a very difficult and uncomfortable subject to talk about. Our intent in developing this DVD is to help parents and other adults become more comfortable talking about it. The better we get at talking about this difficult subject with other adults and with our children, the better chance we have at stopping childhood sexual abuse in our own families and communities. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this frank discussion between parents and experts about childhood sexual abuse. We think this discussion will help you learn more about this sensitive subject and what you can do to prevent this abuse from occurring or continuing. Our panel of experts includes Juan Perez from the Merced County Human Services Agency and Patricia Bauer from Valley Crisis Center. These experts have extensive experience working with children and families who have encountered childhood sexual abuse. Childhood sexual abuse is more common than many of us realize or may want to admit. There is often a culture of silence around the subject, but it does happen to thousands of children every day, and it can happen to any child. While parents may envision a stranger snatching a child to sexually abuse him or her, the truth is that most children who are sexually abused know the abuser, and it may often be a member of the family. That's just one of the sobering facts we are going to hear about today. Let's begin this conversation by having Patricia tell us what childhood sexual abuse is. Childhood sexual abuse is any uh, sexual act or behavior where a child is used by the abuser for their sexual stimulation. So this might be physical acts such as intercourse, fondling, or any inappropriate touching. It might also be non-physical things such as uh, an abuser talking about sexually explicit things with the child, maybe exposing their genitals to the child, taking photographs of them to be used for pornography, or maybe showing the child pornography. Um, so again, it can be both physical and non-physical. Earlier I heard him say that thousands of kids are molested or sexually abused every day. Who are these kids? All children are at risk of becoming victims. It happens to boys, it happens to girls uh, from all ages, from all families, from all neighborhoods, different social economic levels, so it happens to all children. Um, one in four girls and one in six boys will be the victims of child sexual abuse by the time they reach 18. Who are the abusers? Where does it happen? 90% of childhood sexual abuse is committed by someone that's known to the child. So this is someone that the child knows and trusts. And this is often really surprising for people to hear because it counters many stereotypes that we have about sexual abuse. Uh, abusers can be family members, they may be friends of the family, or it might be another person the child knows and trusts, such as a neighbor, uh, um, an after-school activity leader, a coach. Um, so it, again, somebody that the child knows and trusts and that is involved in their life. Abusers can be any age, any gender, um, they might be uh, an adult, it might also be an older child. They come from um, any ethnic background or sexual orientation. And what these abusers have in common is their ability to exert power and exert control over a child. Um, and although sexual abuse may take place any, anywhere, um, because the people who are committing the abuse are known to the child, it's often in these places that we would normally consider safe, such as the abuser's home or the child's home. So why is it that often we hear on the news that children are being abused by strangers? Some child sexual abuse is committed by a person that the child does not know. Uh, some of these perpetrators meet kids through the internet. There are times that the children are approached or kidnapped by strangers and we hear more about these cases because they get more media coverage. It is important to remember 
though only about 10% of the children abused do not already know their abuser. Then who should we be suspicious of? Obviously, it's not enough to tell our kids, don't talk to strangers. Right, since most of the people committing this abuse are uh, people that we know and trust, it really isn't enough to say um, to your child, just don't talk to strangers, because that doesn't meet the reality of, of how these situations happen. Um, you should really pay close attention to anybody older than your child who pays special attention to your child or wants to spend time with your child. Um, pay attention to if, if someone is being especially nice or is buying gifts for your child. Uh, gifts are sometimes used in what we call grooming. Can you tell us more about grooming? Uh, so most sexual abuse doesn't happen at once, it happens over time. So grooming is the, really the process of warming the child up. And this is where uh, the abuser is gaining the trust of the family members and the child. And it starts out with non-sexual activities. So uh, most abusers are very crafty at figuring out how to gain the trust of the child, what things the child is interested in, and they'll take advantage of that. They'll use strategies that sometimes will make the child feel confused. So they'll make the child feel very special and loved um, by buying them gifts and spending time with them and then they'll convince them that sexual contact is what people who love each other do and uh, this is very confusing for the child and this is part of uh, what makes it difficult for a child to, uh, to talk about what's going on. Um, the child is sometimes made to uh, feel like a willing participant um, in the abuse, so sometimes the child will be made to feel like they wanted the abuse to happen, and they might become emotionally dependent on the abuser as well. And so this is all part of the, that grooming process and the, the manipulation that abusers will use. Um, so because of this manipulation and because of these manipulative tactics, uh, the abuser may or may not use force with the child. So oftentimes, instead of force, there are threats that are used, maybe threats to harm the child or a family member, um, or just the emotional manipulation, um, making the abuse seem kind of like a game. I'm sure my child would tell me if this happened to him. Actually, most kids don't tell. Uh, perpetrators trick children so that they will stay quiet. They may threaten to harm the child or his or her family. It is common for abusers to tell children that if they tell, they will never see their parents again. They are masterful at getting kids to keep their secret. Sometimes kids do not tell because they feel shame or guilt. They think no one will believe them. They may fear that telling may break up their family, especially if the perpetrator is a family member. Maybe they don't want to disappoint or hurt their parents. Uh, sometimes they do not tell because they do not want to get the abuser in trouble or don't want to get themselves into any trouble or they have the perception that they're going to get into trouble. Now I'm very concerned. What can we do to make sure this doesn't happen to our kids? Also, are there some kids that are more <coughs> risk than others? Right. Any child at any age can become a victim of child sexual abuse, and abusers are really looking for children that they think won't tell, so this is why we need to talk to all children about sexual abuse. And you should start having open and honest conversations with your children as early as two or three years old. Um, so one way to go about doing this is to create and then maintain safe and open lines of communication with your children. Let them know that it's okay for them to talk with you about this and to ask questions um, about this. Uh, you should teach them that their body belongs to them, that uh, it's important for others to respect their body and talk to them about what, their, what boundaries are with their body and that it's never okay for somebody to violate their, those boundaries or to disrespect their body. Um, they also need to be taught how to respond if somebody does violate their boundaries or is acting disrespectfully to their body. Um, and so you can talk to them about yelling no or telling the abuser, I'm going to tell someone. Um, they should also be taught not to keep secrets um, from you about this type of thing. So really letting them know that if uh, somebody has done something to them or crossed those boundaries that um, they should come and tell you about that. And let them know that you'll listen to them um, and that you're there for them. And you should really have more than one conversation with your children about this. This shouldn't just be a, a one-time conversation. This should be many conversations over time, starting when your children are very young um, up until they're um, teens. And this is where that those open lines of communication are really maintained. Um, be really keen observers about your children's behavior, how they're acting or interacting with others, and notice if you see changes in their behavior at all that might indicate that something's going on. And you should also be involved in your children's activities, so know who your children are spending time with, um, what other people are going to be around, what adults are involved, 
and, uh, and who's supervising these events. Uh, since you can't be everywhere with your children at all times, you should know uh, who else is involved and who your children are spending time around. And really trust your instincts if you feel like a situation is uncomfortable. The internet is another place that perpetrators can meet your, your child. Many children access the internet. Um, at least one in every five children has received a sexual solicitation over the internet. Here are some internet safety tips that may help. Do not allow microphones or earphones when children are playing video games with unknown people. Do not allow children to join in chat rooms. Restrict use of computers and video game devices to places where kids can be easily supervised, such as the kitchen or other rooms where adults are present. Regularly check your computer's internet history and activity. Teach your child to never give out personal information online, including his or her name, address, school, and so forth. Set up strict parental controls on your computer. What are the signs of sexual abuse? No parent wants to imagine that his child has been the victim of sexual abuse, so they may want to ignore or misinterpret information. Um, there are some things to look for, some behavioral things. For example, if your child has, is displaying some sort of anxiety, um, not sleeping well, um, is complaining of pain in their genital area, those are some indications that they may have possibly been abused. But like I said, it does not mean that they've been abused. Well, if I think this is happening to my children, what can I do? If you suspect that your child has been abused, uh, you should talk with your child in a way that makes them feel safe. So let them know that it's okay for them to talk to you and that you'll listen. If you're unsure about how to start this conversation, it might be helpful to talk with a counselor or, or a pediatrician and they can maybe give you some tips on how to approach this topic. Uh, we recommend using a calm voice and asking your child if they've ever been touched in a way that's disrespected their body or if they've ever felt pressured to do something that they don't want to do. When you ask these questions, you should be prepared uh, to hear an answer that you don't want to hear. Um, so really keep that in mind before you have this conversation. Um, when you're talking to your child, listen to them. Listen to what your child tells you and assure them that it was not their fault. This is really the most important thing that you can do for your child. Your belief and support for your child when they talk to you about this is so important for their healing process and really uh, is a very important part of them um, not being uh, abused further um, by this person. If you um, need help and support, you should contact community resources that can help you and uh, provide you with information such as Valley Crisis Center or Child Welfare Services. That's uh, what these resources are here for. You should also report your suspicions to the police. Contact law enforcement and let them know that your child has talked to you about sexual abuse. Um, you should also find a counselor for you and your child to talk to. This is a very emotional time for you. You're going to need support and talking to a counselor can be very important. Um, a lot of parents are scared that if they do report sexual abuse that they're going to have their child taken away from them. And what you should remember is that your job as a parent is to protect your children and to make sure that they're safe. And so by reporting sexual abuse, you are helping to keep your children safe um, and helping to protect your children. And you're also helping to protect other children who might be uh, experiencing abuse by this person. I can see how it would be so hard to have this conversation. It is so difficult for us to imagine that this could happen to our children that we can really convince ourselves that it's not what we think. And since often the perpetrator is someone the parent and child both know, it's doubly hard to believe it could be true. Let's see if there are any more questions. What if I have to leave my child with somebody I'm not comfortable with? You should really trust your instincts. If somebody does something or says something that makes you uncomfortable or gives you that gut feeling that something isn't right, you need to trust it. Um, do not leave your child with that person. And we know that since most people who uh, sexually abuse children are people that are involved in our lives, you shouldn't dismiss that instinct that you have that something isn't right. Um, you should really uh, trust the, that feeling even if this person is a relative or a family friend. Also keep in mind that when you leave your child with someone, you're also 
also leaving them with other people that might come into the home or other people that might know that family member or friend. So you really should uh, take every precaution to make sure that the situation that you're leaving your child with is safe. We know that nothing is more important, no job or activity is more important than the safety of your child. At what age or when can I talk about this with my children? It's never too early. It starts as soon as they are out of your care, when they're two, three, and continue to have that conversation as they grow. Let's see if any of our experts have anything they want to add before we end. Remember that sexual abuse of children is never ever the child's fault. It's always the fault of the person who chose to harm the child. Um, it's our ultimate responsibility as adults to protect our children. So as uh, parents, as family members, as community members, uh, we need to play an active role in helping to keep our children safe. If we see something that doesn't seem right or we know of a situation where a child has been harmed, it's important that we step in and we speak up about it. Uh, we need to make it clear that as a community, we have zero tolerance for the sexual abuse of our children. It's only by talking about these issues that we can start to prevent it in our community and really take steps to keep our children safe from sexual abuse. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about childhood sexual abuse. We hope that this discussion has helped you be more knowledgeable about this subject and will help you take the next steps toward prevention. We've now learned that all children are at risk of being victims to sexual abuse. And many abusers are someone that the child knows and trusts. Also, communicating openly with our children about the subject is a key prevention tool. And most importantly, we as adults are ultimately responsible for protecting our children. We should learn more about who our children interact with and how they spend their time. In part one of this DVD, we talked about how important it is to have conversations with children about childhood sexual abuse as a major prevention strategy. We are now going to see some examples of conversations between parents or guardians and their children. We suggest you watch these scenes first without your children. After you have watched them, you can decide if you want to watch them again with your children. These examples are simply guidelines or ideas to help you have your own conversations. It is not necessary that your talks go exactly like these. The goal is to help you get started. Hey, Delilah. I wanted to talk to you about what I was watching on the news earlier. Um, I saw that it kind of caught your attention um, when they were talking about the little boy who had been molested. Do you remember that? No. no, you don't remember? Well, it kind of caught your attention. I was watching you, and I saw that you were looking at the TV. He was about your age, and so I wanted to let you know that this is stuff that can happen. Well, do you know what molested means? No. Well, that means when somebody comes in and does something to you that's inappropriate, where they touch you where you shouldn't be touched, like in your private, you know, they touch your breast or they touch your vagina, things like that, or when they ask you to do stuff to them, and that's not okay. So I want to talk about what you can do if you're ever in that situation, okay? Let's see, let me have one of your dolls. All right, let's start off with this one. So let's just say maybe mommy and daddy are in the backyard and, and we're gardening and daddy's friend just walks in and you're sitting on the couch, all right? And he's like, hi, Delilah, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. So where's your mommy and daddy? Outside in the garden. Oh, okay. And maybe he comes sits next to you and touches your hair and says, Oh, you smell so pretty. And then he just kind of rubs your back and maybe touches your leg. When you feel uncomfortable, just get up and make up an excuse. Oh, let me go call my mommy and daddy or I have to go outside and play. So let's try that, okay? Okay. So he comes over, opens the door. Hi, Delilah. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. So where's your mommy and daddy? Outside in the garden. All right, so I'm gonna sit right here and watch TV with you. Oh, I like your I hair. I need to go outside. All okay. right, good job. All right, I like that one. Now let's see, you know that maybe, let's try a different thing. Maybe he tells you to come sit down. Maybe he's waiting for dad to finish up doing something and he says, come here Delilah, come sit next to me. And so you come and you sit next to him and then he touches you and he makes you feel uncomfortable. What can you do then? Um, what can you do? Are you gonna let him continue to touch you? No. No? Well, what you can say is, I'm gonna go see if my daddy's finished. All right, so let's try that, okay? So he comes up and he's touching you and he's making you feel uncomfortable. What are you gonna say? 
I'm going to go with my dad. Yeah. You can just say, I'm going to go with my dad or I'll be right back. Okay? And I want you to always know that you can come and tell me if anybody ever makes you feel uncomfortable. I want you to feel comfortable talking to me about it. Okay? Now, how about if mommy and daddy are not home? Let me see. Did you have another doll with you? Yes. All right. And what if it's the babysitter? And she always comes over and she's always the one who babysits you when mommy and daddy go out to have dinner. And let's just say she brought over her collection of stickers or something, something cute that she wants to show you. And she's sitting on the couch and she says, hey Delilah, come here, come sit next to me. And so you come sit next to her and she's showing you and you're like, yeah, that's really cool. And yeah. she starts to play with your hair and she's like, oh, you smell so good. And she starts to make you feel uncomfortable. What you can do then is say, I'm gonna go play outside with my friends, okay? And just go. All right, so let's try that. Ready? So she's sitting down and says, hey, Delilah, come sit next to me. Come look at my stuff. This is really cool. And you're really into it and she's touching your hair and she's making you I'm feel comfortable. Play outside. There you go. I want you to get up and go as soon as possible. And if none of your friends are outside, I want you to be able to go to the neighbor, either the one across the street or the one right next door. Okay? So let's try that one more time. Ready? Hey, Delilah, come here. Come check out my cool sticker collection. Oh, I like your hair. Really pretty. I'm go to my neighbor's house. All right. Good job. So now you know what to do when, you're, when somebody makes you feel uncomfortable? Yes. All right. High five. Delilah. Yeah? Do you remember how I made that rule where I don't want you to keep any secrets from me? Yeah, I remember that rule. Okay, do you know why I made up that rule? No. No? I made up that rule so that you can be safe, okay? If anybody ever asks you to keep a secret from me, I want you to feel comfortable coming and telling me that secret. Do you understand? Yes. Now, especially when somebody does something to you, there might be like an adult or a teenager that wants to touch your breasts or touch your vagina, or they want you to do something sexual or to them, to touch them. Okay, and I don't want them to ever do any of that to you but they might try that okay and they might tell you let's keep a little secret we're gonna play a little game and they do these things to you and they ask you to keep that secret from me will you keep that secret from me no now what if they tell you now if you tell anybody if you tell your mommy or your daddy i'm going to kill them would you still tell me no because i don't want you to get killed okay but i want you to come and tell me okay i'm gonna be okay I'm going to be safe, and I also want you to be safe. I want to protect you. So I need you to come and tell me as soon as it happens to you, if it happens to you. If anybody tells you to keep that secret, I want you to feel comfortable coming and telling me. You think you can do that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Give me a hug. You know, I noticed when I dropped you off at your cousin's party that you hugged everybody that you saw when you got out the car. But when Charlie went to hug you, you backed up. Did he do something make you uncomfortable or bother you or anything? Once he touched my lap for a really long time. And what did you do? I just sat there until he was done. Listen, sweetheart, um, you don't let anybody touch you if you don't want them to touch you, especially you don't let them touch your private parts. You know what your private parts are, right? Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if they're related to you or a friend or just an adult. You don't let them touch you. Do you understand? If anybody tries to touch you in a place that makes you feel bad, sad, or uncomfortable, you tell them no, stop, you scream, you hit, kick, you run, and you tell somebody, do you hear? It's important that you tell somebody. When I was a little girl, somebody tried to do something like that to me, but I told my grandmother, and my grandmother protected me. She made sure that I was never in a situation like that and that I knew what to do. And that's why I'm telling you, okay? So if somebody tries to touch you, what are you gonna do? Scream, run, hit, kick, 
okay. Remember to say no and remember to tell somebody, okay? All right. you're getting so good at hitting the ball. Coach John's gonna be really impressed with you. Yeah, I guess. You know, for the last couple of months, all you have talked about is impressing your coach with how well you hit the ball. Now you don't want to? Well, I do, but, oh, never mind. Can we stop now? Yeah, we can stop. But what's going on? You're acting different. I'm just not feeling well. You were feeling fine till a minute ago. You're right. I am fine. Let's keep playing. All right. Are you okay? Dad's here. You can tell me what is going on. I don't know what to say. Do you want to talk to Mom? No, not Mom. Okay. Hold on. Now... You can tell me what is happening. Something is up. Did something happen to you? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, yes. I don't know. Look, you can tell me what is going on. I'm here to listen to you. Nothing that you can say will make me mad at you. Well, well I stayed after practice to help Coach put away the equipment. And? And he, he asked me to do some stuff. What kind of stuff? Um, stuff like, like touching stuff. Okay. Okay. You're here safe with me now. Can you give me a hug? Okay. I'm so proud of you. You're very brave. Thank you for opening up. And when you say some touching stuff, what do you mean? Well, when I was changing, he asked to rub my back. I, I didn't know what to say, so I said yes. And then he kept touching me all over. What do you mean, all over? Uh, all over my body. Okay, tell me exactly everything that happened. Notice that Dad did a fine job of staying calm, even after he knew something inappropriate had occurred. Of course, he was angry, confused, and scared, but he knew that the best way to be there for his son was to listen and support him. Children who are victims of sexual abuse have a better chance of recovering from this trauma when they have supportive parents and caregivers who believe them and take further action to protect them. Dad made sure to reassure his son that he was safe from now on, and Dad went on to contact the local authorities to help make sure that the perpetrator did not have the opportunity to victimize another child again. These conversations may be very uncomfortable at first, but the more you talk about childhood sexual abuse with your children, the easier it will become. Children need to know they can and should talk to their parents and guardians about anything. Talking openly and often with your children about this subject can help them from becoming victims. It can also help you recognize if abuse has occurred. Open communication will help your children know what to do if they are ever in an inappropriate sexual situation. It will also make it more likely that your children will come to you if they are ever approached or abused. Please begin having these conversations. Don't wait until it's too late. Now is the right time. Your children depend on you to keep them safe. <laughs>